Voila. Yeah. I'm just going to check we're live on Facebook. <gasps> we are live. I can see we're live. Yeah, well, I'm just going to check it. Come up on here. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Share it. Oh, we're down. Mm -hmm. She loves on me. I'm gonna share it into onto our page as well. So if you just wanna say hi. <laughs> hi everyone. Oh, do I need to flick? Do I flick on this one? I don't think so. It should be fine. Okay. It should do automatically on this software. Let me know if you're there, guys. Yeah, it's, it is while well, I'm just opening it up. Awesome. Checking some. Right, just whilst I wait for people to pop on then, I'm going to start getting my paints out. Have you got your mobile data on? It's a little bit blurry. Yep, no. Oh, it's very quiet. You turn the sound up on yours, it's very quiet. And there is some interference. It should go in a second now. It's only because okay. I've just changed my Wi-Fi. Okay. There we go. As loud as it can get. I can just talk louder. I was still got the headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm probably actually like talking really loud. <laughs> okay, so we are live. Right, so I'm just going to share that onto our page. We do have people watching. So we've got Susan, Georgia, <gasps> Karen. Hey, everyone. Just checking. Yeah. I can't see any of that on this one. No, you can't. I know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's not <laughs> I'm like, no, help me. <laughs> um, that's fine. I'm just I'm just doing a little bit of sharing and waiting for people to pop on and then we'll get started. Yeah, I'll get a paint out, yeah. <laughs> right. <clears throat> this is where the whole one out. <laughs> So it's the Monet inspired Chester Jaws today, everyone. I've been super excited to get started on this piece. And everyone who's um, a part of the um, J Artistry Lives group, um, probably already seen that I've popped a video on. Um, just a few, um, what you call it, Laura? What <laughs> wasn't this thing? <laughs> Step by step poses of what I've been doing, what I've been up to. That's what I mean. I know what I mean. It's right. too early. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh God! I'm so <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Hello, everyone. <laughs> oh, did you um? So. Uh, we do have new software. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you want to know that? <laughs> Anything you. checking, <laughs> hand it over. Um, <laughs> yeah, so we are using brand new video software that we are hoping is going to reduce some of the technical issues that we've been having. Uh, eventually, we'll hopefully have multiple cameras and things. So we're starting off with just one this week, so we're not over overdoing it. Uh, so you'll notice on the post in J Artistry Lives, there'll be uh, a little link that you can click. That is so that if you if you want to, you can accept Steamyard um, to see your profile picture, and we can see you then, can't we? It just means that when you comment, we know who said what. Obviously, you don't have to do that. Uh, you can make comments, and it'll just come up with you know like a like a grey profile picture, and then we can see who said that on Facebook later. So, yeah, so while Jess is painting, I'll be checking the comments. I'll be putting some of them up on the screen. Hopefully it'll be quite interactive, fingers crossed. <laughs> and it looks great. I love our little, uh, <laughs> our banner. little banner. Yeah. <laughs> so you're getting all your paints ready, aren't you? That's it. So um, I'm just using a mixture of um, acrylics and chalk paints today. Um some metallics as well yeah so Jess, jessica's doing this little big bomb bomb chest behind us here <laughs> i'm trying to do, <laughs> do you want to pass me the paint and i'll show them what you've painted it in? yeah and pass me the lid as well so, I'm to the color. so jess has painted it in dixie bell and it is dixie bell yankee blue so that probably shows you the color a little bit better it's a really nice sort of absolutely beautiful rich blue colour. 
How did you find painting with them? It is, well, <laughs> can I say it? It's the best <laughs> I've used so far. I mean, I absolutely loved the finish on it. It's, um, it went on really smooth. Um, it was really, you can manipulate it really well as well. Manipulate. Um, manipulate. manipulate. <laughs> Take off, take off. <laughs> um, yeah, it was just fabulous, basically. <laughs> and how many coats did you put on it? So um, I put on three coats. Um, usually, you would only need two coats, um, but because this was a really high gloss tee, um, I just wanted that extra um, layer on it. And you sanded it down first, didn't you? Which is why you did. I did, and I sort of six loops. Six loops. Six loops. Slick stick prime. I'm doing yeah. it now. I'm doing it. How different. <laughs> yeah, the slick stick. So if you've got a really super shiny, glossy surface, Dixie Belle do a slick stick that you can put on, which then makes the chalk paint adhere to it. So because Jessica had sanded it down, that took all that gloss off because it wasn't a gloss material it was made out of. It was a paint that had been applied to it that was like a glossy paint. So that's why we could sand sure. it off. Yep. <clears throat> tell so people what you're doing on it. I'll move out of the way. And yeah, I'll show you. Piece, and I will then. go do comments. <sighs> there you go. All right, then. So this is the piece I've been working on. It's a beautiful... Um, is it a bomb, bomb chest, isn't it? Yeah. Um, a bomb chest. So it's got these beautiful, um, like a curved shape to it. Um, yeah, lovely. So I painted it um, inside and out. And so yeah, it's just the artistry now. So the artistry is going to be Monet inspired. So I'm one of my favourite artists. As from my other lives, you probably know. <laughs> I've always talked about him. There we go. So is that a great just, angle? Just one second before you get started. So we've had a question. So, um, uh, Susan, who's asked Why did you sand it? Why did you sand it? Um, usually, with the paint, you don't need to sand. Um, you don't really need prep work to it, to be honest. Whoever had this before, it is a pre-owned piece. Um, there, there was a lot of drip marks. And because it was a high gloss... Um, just like hand sanding it wasn't going to work, so I had to get the mouse on it. Um, but you don't need to do that if you, necessarily. You, would it being a gloss paint, though, if you'd have put it straight on, you'd have had trouble getting it to adhere, wouldn't you? No, no, really? it goes on really well. Yeah, oh, okay. I mean, yeah. No, I didn't know that. <laughs> I'm going to go on the same side. Yeah, that's why um, I purely just did like the edges where the. Um, Previous owner had like got it quite clum clumpy. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> All right. So my inspired piece today. I'm going for the. God. There we go. The lily pads. I have done a few canvases of this before. Um. I'll just show you that, and then I'll just get started. I'll just turn it on. There we go. Oh, so that's the canvas I've do, done before. You can see that on the JR Artistry page. And that is what I'm going for today on the front of the dresser. Right, I'm ready. Let's get started. I'm going to be using paint brushes and palette knives today. Um, let's get a paint brush first of all. That one will do. Right, so. If you just let me know about the angles and stuff, Laura. Yeah. Yeah, that, that looks fine. Is yeah. that all right, Casey? Oh, no. Well, it is. I think it's just shifting a little bit. There we go. We'll bring it a bit closer. Like yeah. that? Yeah, I think that looks good. There we go. Right, yeah. Okay, so first of all then, so I'm just going to keep it as a piece of art. Um, so I'm going to leave this top lip here painted in the blue, which will match the bottom bit here. Um, so this beam and then the three draw front is what I'm going to be painting on today. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is um, mark out where all the um, dark and light sections are going to be. So <clears throat> I am double dipping, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, have you ever painted a piece where you don't double no, dip? No, and look at this, I'm just... <laughs> Already? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Do you want me to get you a wipe? No, I'm all right. <laughs> yeah. all right I'm going to start on the bottom, bottom corner. So, 
My lily pads um, predominantly are going to be on the edges and they're going to fade out um, into the middle. So it's kind of like crossing over and then the light of the water will be in the centre. That will be like the centre focus. So I'm going to start with my darker colours on the edges. I love it. <laughs> I love it already. So I'm just using quite a thick brush at the moment and I'm getting it quite textured. Um, <clears throat> and then after I've kind of mapped it out, I will then use my palette knife and start dragging the paint across there. Did you get me a screwdriver, Laura? Okay, I just want to know why <laughs> you want that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, there's lots in there. All right, so what I'm going to do is just pull right, the drawer it's out. The watches now. Awesome. Thank you. Zero. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. It's your particular. Yeah, this video software is is new, so we we are still getting used to it and what it can do. But there we go. So I've just pulled the draw front out just so I can get a really nice clean edge without having to keep going over what I've already done. I might make our logo smaller, Jess, because it's kind of covering your face. There we go. <laughs> it's a tattoo. Uh, I can actually see you better. <laughs> right, so I'm using a really dark tealy emerald green and a black at the moment. I'm not being perfect. I want all these wispy parts to come through. Um, yeah, the more texture with one eye, the better. And how do you get the texture? By by literally light, hardly any water okay. and laving upon laving. So by the time I've mapped out this with the light and the, where the leaf pads are going to go, the dark places, this should be dry enough then. I'm going to start applying even more paint, really thick with my palette knife and then okay. dragging it. Okay. I've never done anything like this before, so I'm really fascinated to see how it's going to look. We've talked how long, how many years do you think we've talked about you doing a Monet inspired like uh, at least two, <laughs> yes yeah. two. All right, so I'm kind of I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Um, I'm just trying to map out at the moment where I want um the really dark intensity of the um, lily pads. And I'm just keeping it very wispy. Try not to think about it. <laughs> no, like, Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Impossible <laughs> for me. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to be predominantly down here to be the dark area. Um, and then have so you are probably making this up as you go along, really, totally. aren't you? Yeah. And it all depends on each piece of furniture as well. Okay. It all depends on their structure. So if you had like a really um, long piece, for example, um, like a really long dresser, I would do like a whole big section of leaf pads in the middle to break it up. You can add quite a few, you know. Okay. I'm going to have a few here. And then this is going to come up the side here. I'm going to try and move quite quickly today. So, um, yeah, that's my screwdriver. So why are you opening the drawers while you do it? Um, just so, come on, there we go. Um, just so I can get a nice clean edge because you don't want to keep going oh, over yourself. Okay, so you don't want to get it down the side. Yeah, no. Push that one in whilst I'm working on that yeah. one. Okay. All right, so that's going to lead down there. It's going to fade out into the middle. There's going to be another section of lily pads coming in through the top corner. I'm undecided at the moment if I want um, some more up here. I'm not sure. What I might do is add the light areas in, and I can go back in and add some more dark, depending on what I feel visually looks analysis so it does mean that every single time you do a molly inspired piece you know obviously so subjects are going different. well they're all going to be different totally <laughs> different absolutely i mean i'm not even looking <laughs> you know i can't i can't do that again. <laughs> my version of molly inspired would be like you know i need to have a go at doing something like this just letting free and seeing what i come up with 
Yeah, you see what I'm liking because I don't like it too contrived. Like, oh, you know, there's a, this is all completely structured. So um, as I'm painting, I'm now realising that, you know, I want some lily pads coming down here. And this area is going to be where the light hits the water. So visually now, I'm kind of getting the structure. Okay. I can see it in my head. <laughs> oh my <God. laughs> right, okay. I'm just adding some contrasting colours as well. Um, because those will be brought through then um, with the palette knife. I think. Okay, so that's when the lip had to go in. Done. Washer, washer. So we got, are you using acrylics? I missed the very start. I'm using a mixture of um, a whole range. Oh, who you not be over? A whole range of acrylic paints. <laughs> literally a whole range. Just, I have on my palette at the moment. Oh, God, what I've done. <laughs> I have just put various different um, blues, greens, um, um, you know, the black and white, obviously. And then I'm also using some short paints as well. So I'm just doing a mixture. That's another Dixie Bell there, isn't it? Yeah, that's Stormy Seas, that one is. Yeah, it's a beautiful paint again. So I'm just going to map out my light areas now. And this is um, where the the light is going, like the sunlight is going to hit the water. So you haven't cleaned your brush there, have you? Hell no! Yeah, I have cleaned your brushes. <laughs> Don't do this kind of stuff. I know it's the the, the um, Dixie Bell colour coming through then. Yeah. You so saying? what I like is, like you say, I start off with a white, but I'm naturally getting tonal variations yeah. because yeah. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> Some people may say it's lazy. <laughs> no, no. See, I wonder if this is where I got because obviously you taught me how to paint. Even though I paint incredibly differently to yeah. you, I did learn from you. Yeah. And I wonder if it was seeing you not clean your brushes, somewhere in my mm. mind it must have clicked that you can blend as you paint. Yeah. Which is then how I've gotten to that. Oh, yeah. So you just use some water then to take the hard lines off that white. Yeah, you? because um, I want the most texture to be um, where the lily pads are. So I want this quite watery. Um, there isn't going to be that many lily pads here. Um, so it will be a bit more blended. And then that's going to come in here. I might even have a few um, shrubbery pieces. Um, just some light, you know, coming out of the water. Like it's a bit like more shallow. Pads. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> They are a pond plant. <laughs> I'm teasing. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so I've just I'm just marking out where I want those plants to be as well. The no name plants. They've had another question. So do you use different paint when painting kids' furniture or is it just the finish that is BOC? No, so the actual chalk paints are child friendly as well, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. So you can, and animal friendly as well. Yeah, that that. So you you can go on to each chalk paint, and and they'll all have a statement about their content. So, for example, I was looking at Annie Sloan the other day because I've painted some of my pieces in my children's bedrooms in both Annie Sloan and Vincho. And both their websites have statements where they say that it is child friendly. It's non chop non chocolate, non toxic. Well, a <laughs> non toxic. Um, it is animal cruelty free. Uh, so they can all be used in children's rooms. The only thing we have noticed is you do have to be careful that the wax is fully cured if you are finishing your piece with wax. And I don't actually wax the inside of drawers. Um. No, we tend to use lacquer, lacquer don't we? Yeah. We, we, we had this a few years ago when we did a wardrobe for one of my children. We did wax the inside. It was one of the first children's pieces. And um, I put all the clothes in there ready for when the baby was due, as, as you do when, when you're a mom and you're getting your nesting. And the wax got into all the, all the clothes, didn't it? Yeah. And I had to wash them all. So we literally stripped it all out and allowed the wax to cure. And... Then I think, did we put a top coat of lacquer on as well? 
Or did we just allow the wax cure? No, yeah, I think we, we had we to let go the, over Yeah, it. we let the wax cure and then we put lacquer on and then that stopped it all. And I've had the wardrobe now for two or three years and we've never had any problems. So if you are going to wax, you must allow it to cure for children's furniture first so that it doesn't smell. And I think that can take anywhere from sort of six days up to sort of what's the maximum they say? It's two weeks, but to fully weeks. before you should yeah. um, have any heavy traffic on yeah. it. So I would say if you're worried, you could always just straight lacquer a piece. There are some teething issues with lacquering that we've come across that, um, you, you know, you might find. And, you know, eventually we perhaps will do some more in-depth sort of tutorials at some point. Um, so on the, on the lacquering process, but that would probably be better for children. Oh gosh, come on. So hopefully that helps. Oh, I'm getting messy. <laughs> I tell you what, I'm just gonna. There we go. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> messy, just <Jesse> strikes again. <laughs> it's gotta be done, people. There we go. Right. Okay. That's my first layer then. So, obviously, these are my light areas where the sun's going to be hitting the water across. Um, I'll tell you what, actually, that doesn't make sense. Let me bring that across here because that's where the sun's going to be hitting the lily pads over there and a little bit down here. Um, the darker areas are where predominantly the layer of, of all the lily pads are going to be. And then in this small section down the bottom, you can't see, can you? Yeah, I think you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's going to be where um the shrubbery is going to be. I will bring you in closer. Let me put some um more paint on, uh, with a palette knife now, and um I will you bring can, you in. You can in. see the greens and the lights, Jess. Okay. You can see it. Alright, so um I go between. I've lost it. Um, just the normal like a decorative scraper, and um, you can buy these palette knives. Do you want me to find your scraper? Um, um, no, do you know what? I feel because this piece is curved, okay. I'm going to use a smaller tool, um, because obviously with a scraper, um, it might start taking off the paint on the edges here. Okay. Just in case you change your mind. But that is <laughs> on bigger pieces, <laughs> just in case. So I know you, You sometimes you'll change your mind if you start to get into a flow in. Yep. I'm just double dipping again. I'm just literally taking off the paint. Um, yeah, everything. And all I'm going to do now is start, um, I'll start up here, is start dragging it. Oh, I love this bit. So this is still background, isn't it? You're not doing no. the pad shapes yet? No, not yet. This is just, um, I'll be sorry, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's really just nice. Just going to bring have people in so they can watch this bit a little bit closer. Because what you want is before you get the actual lily pad shapes, um, which you know you go, oh, that is a lily pad. These are supposed to be um, like the abstract versions um, of that underneath the lily pads. Just it's what creates the layers, I suppose. So you're literally dipping your brush in multiple different colours and yeah. then dragging it across. Yeah. And if it's too lumpy, you're sort of re-going over and dragging a bit more. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. I'm going to put that back because I don't want the camera to shake too long in the video, but I just wanted people to see a little closer while you're doing it. And what I tend to find as well is where the... Um, where the contrasting colours hit, I will then transform those into lily pads as well. It just makes it more natural. It's not, I'm not structuring this at all. You know, like I can bring these now into lily pads without me going, I'm going to have one here, I'm going to have one here. Yeah, so yeah. rather than it looking contrived or, or because I think we as humans naturally have a tendency to put a pattern or, yeah, or something like, oh, down, that don't looks we? Not, or no, just let I think, I do yeah, it. I think making something truly random is quite difficult in my experience anyway. So <laughs> I, I, do, I do see what you mean about allowing where you're popping the paint on to become your it pattern. It does the artwork itself, you don't yeah. really need to, it does it. And you can go between a palette knife and a paintbrush. Um, 
you know, he can just uh, undrag it both ways. The more textures and different strokes you have on this piece, the better. So you're going to go in all different directions and... Yeah. Okay. So in the darker sections, you're doing more more greens than and blues than you are blacks at the moment um i will go back in with the black okay i don't really want the black in the corner okay. and what i will do is um once this piece is painted i will add dark wax to the corners okay um and that's just going to intensify you want them to look at the the lily pads okay. so when i look at this piece i'm going to be drawn here and i'm going to be drawn here okay. and the dark wax helps that Right, um, I'm going to let that bit dry a little and I'm going to just start on the, the lighter areas. It's all just about um, building it up. Okay. Right, I'm not even going to clean that. <laughs> there we go. Right, so dragging it along i'm getting quite a lot on my palette knife at the moment because it's not going to be um as detailed as what the lily pads are going to be you see how um the background colors are still coming through because yeah um, all depends on how how hard you press down the palette knife as well. Oh yeah, I really dull. saw it then, where it sort of the palette knife breaks it up, doesn't it? Yeah. It peeks through. Yeah. And what I will do is when this bit is dry then, I will um add like a hint off say the Dixie Bell Stormy Seed and I will go over it again. Um, you know make it more bitty like this and it kind of stops all these really harsh lines okay so at that point so at this point you're not worried about those no definitely not all i'm doing at the moment is um creating textures okay. which are going to come through i'm going to shut that there we go. i want it to what's nice as well is, is if you um overlap it just makes it flow more if you have like the jaw front like this. So what I will do is um make it so it goes across like that, so it all joins up. Okay, I'm gonna leave that a bit. Oh, this is where I know it's gonna come across the water. I mean, it is a bit more difficult on this piece just because it is curved. Um, it would be easier on um, a flat piece. However, hopefully that will add to the beauty of the painting because it will create the um, the structure of like the what the water oh, and the ripples. Yeah. So I'm hoping it will be manipulated. I mean, the paint line seems to be working fairly effectively on, you know, even though it is curved. Yeah, it is, yeah. Are you finding it hard? Are you having to adjust your technique because it's curved? Oh, yeah, I'm having to constantly, because when you're dragging the paint, it's nice to keep it flat. Right. So I am having to, like, move with the piece. So you're, following so you're dragging it yeah. up over. Like here, if you can see, it's starting to um, clump. Yeah. I will just, you know, start getting um, the paint brush down. Okay. And just, you know, making it look less like that. Just dragging bits out. Like that. Drip marks, that's fine. You know, at the end of the day, it's water. <laughs> you can even hand paint ripples into the water as well. Um, yeah. Have a little bit of light here, just a little bit here, because that's going to predominantly be in shadow. Oh, I'm going to drag the laundry there as well. 
yeah, if anybody wants to have a go at this this technique, um, you know, feel free to post it into the J Artistry Lives group. Absolutely. We love seeing people who have a go. So we had um, a lady do an Alice in Wonderland inspired gourd. It is a gourd, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, after one of your lives, and it was beautiful. It was that got stunning. A lot of love, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. It was really nice. So, yeah, the Joe Artistry Lives group, you can share pieces inspired by what you've seen in our lives. You can go into the units for almost like an inductory of all the lives that we've done. So, they are now categorized. If you're looking for Alice in Wonderland or you're looking for Beatrice Potter and you want to see how we approach those illustrations or those pe paint techniques that we'll get onto, those are all organized in the unit section of our group. And you can also get to know us better, can't you? I mean, we're posting sneak peeks behind the scenes, what we're up to. So, you know, you can get to know us better. We can get to know you better. It's a little bit more informal than, than the main page we're so relaxed yeah <laughs> <laughs> so yeah if you are interested then it's www.facebook.com slash groups slash j artistry lives and we'll pop the link up on the video as well once, once we're done and um, in fact actually i can do that now i don't know what i'm saying when we're done because i'm not doing anything <laughs> Yeah, there's the link to the group there for anybody who is interested in joining. It is a free group, so if you just um, ask to be invited and we can approve that. Yeah. Okay, right. there we go. that link's on there now, just in case people do want to join. I'm going back in with my darks again now because I need to let my, my white was quite thick, so I need to let that dry okay. a little bit. <laughs> Five minutes. <laughs> um, so now I'm just starting to um, create a bit more um, controlled texture. Um, so with the um, parts where the lily pads are going to be, I want majority, I can't even talk, the majority of the colours to be the greens, the really dark colours, the blues, the blacks. Um, so that's kind of my colour palette. I kind of want it to look quite muddy in these areas. You could also flip the paint up there as well, depending on what kind of style you want to go for. There we go. Right, more greens. To create the depth with the lily pads, the smaller the texture is, will show that the lily pads are in the distance. Um, so when I use my paintbrush to actually mark out lily pads, um, for example, down the bottom, they will be quite large and that's gonna create the illusion that you're looking like up and they're fading away. I might start adding the lily pads in a minute actually. You can keep going back to this palette knife texture um, after each stage until you're happy with it. Okay. 
the, the technique you're doing it's it's the same approach on a canvas right definitely even paper you can do this um on anything i'm just changing the um strokes now of the palette knife because these are going to be quite tall um they're like reeds coming out of the water okay. i'm just going to drag that up and again that it all just adds dimension Here's paintbrush. Um, let's drag some of those up. Again, I'm going to lay it over the jaw front as well so it matches up. And this just makes the piece look more like a full piece. It is kind of amazing because the, the sort of the individual drawers are disappearing because it's becoming like a square piece of art. Yeah, that's why it's really important to make sure you drag and you follow it over yeah. onto the different drawers. Um, very dark. Mm. Okay, right, well, I'm going to start drawing in some lily pads now. They are going to have shocking pink flowers, <laughs> um, the lilies are. Um, yeah. It'll add a really nice pop against the rich blue of the, because it's almost a bit smoky, the Dictibal. Yeah, yeah. Blue, isn't it? Yeah. And it's Yankee blue. But it just reminds me, it's almost, yeah, like a smoky dark blue, like a smoky navy. I think the shocking pink will look really pretty against that. It should do. Uh, the contrast in the colours. Yeah. Um, yeah. They'll be the only pink on there, won't they? Yeah, they will, yeah. And I mean, it's going to be like bright, bright pink. So um, I'm just adding um, the lily pads in, quite small up here, and not even completely formed. Okay. So it's like a dabbing, circular sort of yeah. motion. I'm going to show you down here the difference. So these are going to be quite dark and they're going to be quite large. So like this. I don't know if I can... Just let the camera... Hopefully I can... I hope that's okay for you. I can just about see that you can see it so hopefully you're getting an idea of the size difference i'm gonna drag that one over there so what i'm doing is i'm just creating a line going all the way up and that will set me then how proportionally big the lily pads are going to be. I'm at the stage where I feel like I need to say, bear with me. Why? <laughs> It's going to turn into a piece. It just looks like a laugher. Yeah, yeah, but that is Mono, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. he, he builds up layers, and at the end, when you've got all the pink flowers and the, the detail, you'll see it. Yeah. We've seen you do Mono before. <laughs> just felt like I had to uh, say that. So I'm trying to add the lily pads up so they are um, touching the other ones as well again to show um, that they're layering upon each other. Okay. 
Are we live on YouTube as well today, Nora? We are, yes. We are live on both in both the J Artistry Lives group, and that's been shared to the J Artistry main page. And we are live on YouTube as well. So we do have a YouTube channel. This is probably the second video that's going on there. But that is another area of videos we'd like to have all in one place. Just because people have different preferences for where they find videos and, and what format they watch them in. And, you know, whether that's Facebook or YouTube. So yeah, I tend to watch quite a lot of YouTube videos of an evening whilst yeah. I'm painting. Yeah. So it's just personal preference, isn't it, like you said, what yeah. people like to watch them on the way. I'm just <laughs> painting now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, I will show you that way to paint it so somebody has noticed it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Your heart. God. laughs> it is Jessica's current work in progress at the moment. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that was in the background. Yes, yeah, so that's her That's her little evening work piece when she's not working on these bigger pieces. So she wants to create a, a wild. wild feel. So it, it's in progress. <laughs> that's a little sneak peek for everyone there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing a bit of blending now, so um, I'm just uh, trying to make it all kind of merry up, if that makes sense. I'm being quite graphic where I'm going. So you're sort of double and tripping, triple dipping your brush and then sort of yeah. almost like a feathering yeah. touch. And um, it's kind of like colouring in around what I've done already. Mm -hmm. Is that to take off yeah. harsh lines? And... Yeah, exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And then what I will do is I can go back in with a paint line again then, and mm -hmm. that's going to um, add more more layers, obviously. But it will start coming together now that I'm blending a bit. So obviously this kind of painting is, is more of the long haul, isn't it? It's, it's not like an illustration which can be quicker to paint because you can finish when you yeah decide to yeah go oh that's it it's done yeah you've coloured it in and it's done yeah you just with this you can keep working and working and adjusting until you're happy, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. Let me blend a bit of water now and do a bit of blending. So this is going to be where the mini pads are um, spacing out. Yeah, because they're going to be getting bigger, aren't they? Yeah. They come down. So, um, like here, for example, what I've just done there. This is where I'll have like a few odd ones, so I'm still mapping it out. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, though, when you add the lip alleys and the flowers, that is at the point, really, when you are done. You're just doing the very final focal points because the majority of a Monet-inspired piece is the background, isn't it? Yeah, the depth, the water build, yeah. the texture, definitely. Yeah, so when you start putting those proper lilies on with, you know, all that pink, you'll be... Look at that. What? That's just happened by mistake and I'm going to turn it into a water ripple now <laughs> you can't make this stuff up <laughs> I love how your mind works I love how you see that and think water ripple it's just crazy I don't even I'm not I don't even have to think oh, that sounds really awkward is it yeah I think <laughs> well no but if you think about, about it, it you, you've been practicing Monet for a while haven't you when did yeah. you start painting Monet pieces at university uh no uh, high school, high school. <laughs> high school, I've had an obsession with him since high school. <laughs> and you've done the water lilies one quite a bit because it's one of your favourites, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And it is relatively easy if you just keep laving up and laving it. Didn't they say when you were at uni that you had quite the knack for... They said Monet style is very my style. Yeah. yeah. It's messy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> What I'm doing and just adding a bit of yellow ochre now, just randomly. Again, it's a contrasting colour. It just um... I'm 
I'll go back over to the same with the palette knife then and blend it in some more. And add a bit of baking there. Let me know how we do for time. We don't want to. Um... Yeah, 45 minutes so far. No, you're doing fine. You know, hopefully people will get a good idea about how to go about starting. I mean, I think the, the, the actual adding of the lily pads is probably. Well, I'd say the easier part of it is probably not. <laughs> well, I've got a few down here at the moment, but yeah. because it is a layering process. Yeah, it's going to take you some time to layer it up until you're happy, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so now what I'm doing is I'm going around where I would see the edges of the lily pads ending and the light fitting. Okay. So I'm adding a bit of a contrasting colour here. And then if I go back over that again, I'm going to then start bringing the white up to it. And that's creating the tones from the, the light, from like the sunlight, up into the edges. Again, it's all depth. <laughs> and I'm just blending again like I did with the lily pads. I hope this is helpful. <laughs> I think it's really cool to see how you start, you know, how you start the process. I think you can see where that light is hitting. You can see where the dark, especially from standing back. So on film, you can really see how the light is dancing round. It's harder for you because you're right up close in the tiny details, whereas yeah. we're further back. You can, yeah. And you, you can see it more from back here. You know, this is a longer time consuming process. Yeah. And that's fine because it's it's supposed to be a piece of art, isn't it? it this yeah. isn't just furniture, this this is art in a it will be in a home. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, it's it's not this way, so you can't you have to take your time and build up the layers and blend it and but hopefully people have got an idea about how, how you start that. Because I, I wouldn't have a clue where to start. I would start with lily pads, which would be completely wrong for a Monet piece. Yeah, yeah. Because then you can't get that natural glide. Yeah. You need to think, what's there first? The water. And then what's going to be in front of it or on top of it, which is like the reeds and the, yeah. the, lily, you know, the lily pads. I think it'll be fabulous. When you do put the lily pads on, I can't wait to see. It'll be the, the shocking pink. Yeah, yeah it'll really bring it to life. Yeah, it's the shocking pink, and it might have a bit of pen detail on as well, because um, I can't help myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, as you're working on it over the next week, you can always post pictures in the Dare Artistry group so that people can see how you're getting With on the lily pads. Yeah. yeah, and then the final piece. You know, it will be so different because of the layering. Yeah. But I think mean, that's yeah. what makes it different and special, isn't it? This will be a one of a kind piece. Yeah. I won't be able to replicate this. No, you couldn't. At all. And I wouldn't want to because I like to know that, um, you know, pieces are quite unique. Just dragging some green. So this is going to be really light. So here we're going to have quite dark blue. I love adding the contrast, like the really bright colours, because yeah. now I'm starting to get a bit more bold with it now because I want like the intensity. That was a cat there, wasn't it? <laughs> Running across the <laughs> And you can be quite bold <laughs> with the bold colours. What do you know? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, don't try and be subtle with the bold <laughs> colours. Um, because I will go back over these with the palette knife in, just doing what I've done. So you've sort of done like a paint layer, a palette knife layer. Now you're doing another paint layer. So you're yeah. saying you're going to do another palette layer. Because you can't, you need to have the paint, the paint brush layer to, to blend. blend in. Yeah. Otherwise, it's just going to look really choppy. Yeah. And like ocean waves and you, yeah. um, you need to keep blending. So how many palette knife and painting layers do you think you'll do just until you're happy? To be honest, I'll probably um, carry on with my paintbrush layer 
like what I've done here, yeah. just, you know, in all the sections. Um, and then I will do one more palette knife. And then if I need to touch up this little bit, I won't go over the whole piece again because I don't want it to. Um, right, you know, I don't, okay. yeah. So probably just another one more layer of palette knife thing. I'm just changing the colour a bit down here now to make it look a bit more um, uh, like boggy. So I'm going more towards the brownie greens for the weaves part. Okay. And then to be honest, I'll probably leave it there for my layers. Um. Keep adding that in. You see what I've done is I've jumped the gun because I wanted to show the weaves, but I haven't done my water behind. So actually what I'm gonna to have to do is kind of wash some of it out. Perfect example. Yeah, of not rushing and taking your so, time. Yeah, this is what would happen, you see. You would have all the parts here, you think, oh that's a bit patchy, and that's what you don't want. You want it to flow. Yeah. Just um, just a bit of water now because the paint's so thick. I'm just blending with water. Can even add a few swirls in, mark it to water with balls. And I'll bring a bit of white in here and I'll leave it there then. It's nice with the thick mono texture as well because you can literally run your hand across and you can feel the textures. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> and then you can even go back in with the base coat layer of what the actual jaws were um, originally as well, and you could bring that back through. Oh, so, so you'd go back in with the Yankee so, Blue? Right, the Yankee Blue here. Because you want it to kind of look like a set. So, um, you know, I'll bring the Yankee Blue into the water part and then it oh, just makes it all... Ties it as, back in. Yeah, definitely. So is that one of the reasons why you chose a blue for the drawers? So yeah. that it would... Absolutely. Okay. I was either going for, um, it's called, it's called, it's the mist one. I think this is really important when designing your artistry. Savannah Mist, that's the one. I was either going for this kind of colour, which is like, um, like a really paley blue, blue green. Thank you, Laura. Um, so I was going to either go for the lighter colour. So that's the Savannah Mist there, if you can yeah. see that, this one. Or I was going to go for some of the dark colours, which is going to be um, what this is here. So this is the colour Jess has used, the Yankee Blue. They actually do have a dusty blue as well, which is a yeah. few, just a few shades lighter. Yeah, so either of those, you can kind of match up. They have a beautiful range of paints, the Dixie Bell Paint Company do. And they're quite bright and intense, and that's what I like about... Um, there we go. So yeah, I'm just bringing that colour back through, and it, uh, and again with the savannah mist, I would have done the same. So it would have been like this kind of colour. So I would have brought it through all the way through the piece. Um, yeah. I think I should leave it there. Yeah, we've got about five minutes. Yeah. There we go. Then I'm just thinking. I don't. I want to let that settle and then have another to have the texture, and then I'll add more texture on then. Okay. I don't I just keep moves, you know, scrubbing it around the piece. Yeah. 
Mm. That's the one thing I think with palette knives, isn't it? There's a longer drying period between definitely layers. Definitely. The good thing is, is you can use um, like the heat guns and the hair dryers because obviously because it's so thick, you're not going to make it run away. Oh, okay. It'll just sit there. So you can dry that. Um, if you're impatient like me, you want to get onto your pants. <laughs> there we go. Awesome. Should I bring them in really close? Yeah, so yeah get a bit of a idea. texture. Here we go, without my head. So these, this is going to be like the background layers for the lily pads. <laughs> so flowery. Okay. Um, this is all going to be blended for the top part of the water, which will then come across. This is where the lily pads are going to fade out in the middle and then come down to the intensity down the bottom. And if I just show you that there. Um, can you see how the lily pads are starting to form a shape? Um, the circular motions, the living, um, yeah. <laughs> it's not hard, it's like, it's just a slap top paint. Well, it, it, it's not, though, because it's... Um... Okay, right. Dawn! I don't want to sit too close to it. <laughs> I'm going to end up with money on my back. Money on too. Oh, no, quite nice. Nice. You can sit a bit close together. There you go. <laughs> Well, then, I hope... Um, <laughs> I'm the wrong way, then. <laughs> You're going off, right? I'm used to going the opposite way that I need to on <laughs> camera. <laughs> there we go. Um, I hope that was really helpful. Uh, but that is my base layer, and I will just do that again for my second layer. And my third layer is going to be where the artistry with the lily pads and the... Um, the flowers are going to come into action then. I'm so excited to see it finished with all the lily pads on and Me all too. the pink. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm like pushing it now because I want to get onto the chucky peak. Yeah. I'll do a sneak peek of that, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, so if you want to see sneak peeks between now and when Jess posts the actual finished piece on our J Artistry page, then pop into our group, J Artistry Lives. And the link is in the comments and you'll be able to see sneak peeks. <laughs> oh, we're excited! Yeah. <laughs> and so next Friday, then it's on to my turn. <laughs> Are you going to give away what you're doing, or you're not sure yet? What are you worried about? <laughs> what you're doing next week, though? I don't know what I'm doing. Do you know what I'm doing? Um, <laughs> I haven't chosen what I'm doing yet. <laughs> okay. We are trying to keep it oh, quite. Are you different. gonna give it away and then let the cat out the bag? Not yeah. give it away as if it's like a giveaway. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> me, I was just like, oh, it's like a yeah. confused. <laughs> I don't know. I have a few different pieces that I could do, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. So I'm gonna keep the cat in the bag at the moment, and then I'll Look reveal it after then. the weekend in the group. I'll, I'll do some sneak peeks of what I'm doing. So yeah, awesome. We yeah. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for joining us. And and see you next week. Yeah. yeah. Bye. I need um <laughs> I need to go and stop it. So I'm gonna come up. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Oh. Oh.